So, so today I want to talk about becoming the creator, um, stepping into peace, love, and power. Uh, peace, love, and power, which is uh, which is really, really important. And being a creator, returning home, returning back to your truth is a very, very, very good feeling. Uh, you know, most of us have, have spent a life thinking that we're limited, thinking that there's problems, thinking that we're not supported, and seeing ourselves as, as separate from this, you know, universe or one song, and seeing ourselves as, as not connected to this infinite intelligence that is somehow making everything, uh, everything work. And it doesn't matter what you call that infinite intelligence, whatever it is, there's a there's a huge uh, there's a there's a huge connection that we all have to so much more than just limitedness. And when we come back to what it is we we really are, and and we step into that, this idea that we're here to create is is so obvious when it comes to uh, humanity is that we have basically spent and when we are the children of many generations of humans who have spent so long focusing on how do we create tools uh technologies and education to finally have uh the, you know a life that we all love and you if you actually step back and think about humanity as one thing you can see this this progression towards you know, basically um, replacing ourselves, you know, by by creating machinery and tooling and, and now AI coming in to, to replace some of the thinking as well. You can you can see this focus. And so there's a lot of questions uh, around, you know, what, what is what is the purpose? What is the the point of, of what we're here to do and be? And uh, and honestly, what we know for sure is we're here to create and we're here to live our fullest expression, yet so many of us are tied up in just solving problems or, you know, going out there and solving this money problem, you know. And, uh, and today I want to talk about returning you back to that creative essence that, that we really all come from and we will all return to and that seems to be creating uh, through us, which is it's quite an incredible thing to to think about. So anyway, uh, let, let's get into that. Uh, one of our core choices is that uh, we choose to live our true nature and purpose. And so I've just got some notes here uh, that I'll pull up. These are just basic notes. You'll find these in my book. You'll find them everywhere. Uh, just talking about the, the superconscious uh, journey. There is a distinct uh, shift and this the shift that I see with people when they 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 shift from living the old orientation to the new orientation, it's profound. When they when they truly get there, the first thing that they arrive at is peace. You know, like peace. A, a true a true creator is totally at peace with how things are and what's going on. And uh, many people don't arrive at that place of peace because they're too busy trying to control. They're too busy, uh, you know, uh, uh, making everything personal. They don't get to that place of peace. There's a really nice uh, old story, and and I'm the, I don't know where the origin of the story is, but 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 the story goes like this: you know, a farmer. Uh, takes his his horse down and, and wins the first prize uh, for the stallion, and uh, you know his neighbor rings up and goes, "Oh, awesome! You know uh, how how great how great is that?" And the farmer says, "Could be good, could be bad." And, and so the next day, that stallion, that prize winning horse, um, breaks out and runs away, and the neighbor rings up to you know share his condolences. I'm like, oh, "I'm so sorry that the the horse is broken out and." And the farmer says, well, you know, could be good, could be bad. And so luckily that horse goes and finds a bunch of other, you know, wild horses and, you know, they 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 create a group and he bring, brings all the, the horses back. And so all of a sudden now this farmer has this, you know, the, uh, this this large number of horses. And so that, you know, the same neighbor rings up and says, wow, look at that. You, you know, you have the best luck. Uh, you've got all these these amazing new horses. The farmer replies, well, could, could be good, could, could be bad. 
And, and so the next day, the the farmer's son's trying to break in some of the the you know the the younger horses and uh, ends up falling off one of the horses and the and the son's farmer breaks his leg. And so again, this this uh, this nosy neighbor rings up and says, "Oh, hey, I'm you know I'm so sorry about your son, your broken leg. That you know your oldest son that must be really bad." And then the farmer says, "Well, it could be good, could be bad." And and the next day, a, a, an army comes through the the army of whatever province or state they live in, and the army enlists every young um, soldier, every young man, um, you know that was this, that that's available. And because the farmer's son has a broken leg, the farmer's son, um, you know, doesn't get enlisted. And so the neighbor, you know, thinks to himself, "Oh, could be good, could be bad." And, and it's such a it's such a good uh, you know story because many times we we knock ourselves out of peace, you know we knock ourselves out of peace, and and, and we we're so busy missing this feedback, you know where where one of the ways that that humans gain more understanding is through experience. Makes sense. We're through experience. We, we typically have to get something wrong in order to learn how to get something right. Does that make sense? Like we just see that, you know, from everything we do. We normally we we try to do something, we get it wrong, and then we we figure it out, then we get it right. And and we have this this learning, learning experience. And this is just true. Like we don't have to talk about it too much. We just know that that's true. Yet so so often we forget that learning experience, we knock ourselves out of peace. We, we, we're too busy, oh, well, you know, that investment didn't work or that that idea didn't work or that relationship didn't work or that that um, exercise plan didn't work. You see that? We're, we're so busy knocking ourselves out of peace. And this is the first thing because the first thing is to understand is that you are completely supported uh, and you've you got to be it, right? Like we, we're completely supported, uh, there's always been enough for everyone. There's, in fact, there's a heck of a lot more than enough. There's, there's everything is here. And, and what's really interesting is that everything that exists right now that we have um, already existed before we had it. You know, like, uh, you know, this, this keyboard and, and, you know, this, this phone and, and this, this coffee and, and this, this pen and, and it, it all existed. The ability to make plans, it was already there. It, however, a hundred years ago, uh, they hadn't figured out how to do that yet, but it was still there. Does that make sense around? It was still, it was still there. They just need to be figured out and understood. So when we get, when we truly get to peace, we understand, well, the, the, the thing that's coming next is already here. We just haven't put it together in the right way yet. And, uh, you know, the things that you can do now, you couldn't do at one point. You've, you just now got to figure out how to do it. And, and so often a creator or, or a person going for it knocks himself out of this place of peace. They think, oh, look how great this is, or, you know, look how bad that is. And they, they take things personal. So peace is the first and most important place. And, and we talk about opening the wizard's gate and, and arriving at presence and peace. And the, the, second, the second thing is love. Peace and then love. Love. You know, what, what is love? Like, what is, what is that? It's a chemical reaction in our, in our body. Love. What is love? Well, love, you know, love is that the sun keeps shining and gives the earth everything that, or the, the plants, everything it needs to do photosynthesis. And it just shines like that is love. It just, it, it's just, it just is, it's just giving. And so love is creative. Love is a verb. Love is a doing. And we get to, love things into existence. We get to love things into existence. So once we're in peace, that's great. And, uh, you know, you can, you can sit and do nothing with that peace, but that's not really uh, what humanity is designed for, just to sit and do nothing. We do have desires of love to, to be creative, to... Uh, to teach, to inspire, to to build, to make things. And so once you arrive at peace, the second step is 
what would I love? What would I love to experience? You know, and many of us say, well, I'd love to experience having, you know, an oversupply of prosperity, or I would love to be, uh, you know, have, have more than I can spend. Great. What else would you love? I would love to create art. I'd love to, you know, have a great family environment. I would love, what would I love? And, and, and this idea of what I love, we bring into true choice. So peace, we, when we talk about peace, we talk about presence, the magnetic moment, opening the wizard's gate, you know, being it before you see it. But then we talk about love. And, you know, when we talk about love and you think of that feeling, if you're already at peace and just tune into that feeling of peace, like it could be good, could be bad, like eh, it is what it is. Then you step into, well, what would I love? And that's a really nice question. What would I love to create? As a creator with your magnetic mind, we create, we don't complain. We, what would I love to create? And we, and we write a list, right? When we call them choices here, we write a list. We say, okay, this is what I would love to use my creative essence to, to bring forward. I would like to see this exist. I would like to manifest i would like to witness it i want to i want that that's that's what i choose and so after so after peace it's uh it's just love it's love and so for many of us we need to step into that place of peace right now and and just realize that that we are the you know the the creators and then what would i love and go go on that journey and the, and the last thing is power. Last is power. Peace, love, and power. Peace, love, and power. We have an absolute infinite supply of power. We have so much, we have so much power. And good power, like the power that's, uh, you know, that we call electricity. We have we have this power. We have this nearly unlimited. Well, it does it does run out, but we have this conscious power, and we have this power for a, for a good hundred years, and, and we have this this power, and this power is our focus. This power is our decision. Our power is our action. We have this uh, we have this power that once we're in peace, and we have no resistance to to how it is, and and then we choose what we would love. We then set out on a journey to to bring our power into that so peace peace love and power peace love and power here in magnetic mind and what you what you really must realize and, and must do is we're going through those three steps who likes that peace love power peace love power it's it that's what we're up to peace love power so if i go into our um you know our, our big diagram here the journey to really living as that creative spirit the 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 first thing is um number one this is in my book and you'll find this all over that this is everywhere this diagram okay so uh, the first step is we already are this creative spirit okay you you already are it you are whatever this what whatever this intelligence is that uh you know is, is holding everything together you come from that you are that we start this or we start we're pure creative spirit and and that's that's very important to to realize that there is an instruction there is an intelligence there is something that is uh that that is working together next is you become an individual with a limited perspective okay so instead of just being this pure spirit you you we all turned up into this amazing thing called human being and we become limited we see through our own eyes we we know where uh, we we know that at the end of our fingertips that's the end of our body and we get given a name and uh, we learn things, right? And so we become an individual. Now, through this fall from grace, we uh, we actually realize that we we are limited, and we orient to the world. Now, orient 
uh, or orientate is a made up word, orientate, a verb of how to orient is really where you're pointed. OK, so if you have orientation, it's pointing you in the right in, in a certain way. So it's how you're focused. It's what direction you're focused. And so what we do is we actually focus on the world that we're separate and limited. As we do that, we realize uh, that we are limited and we actually think we need to try to solve this limitation. You know, we, we, we notice that there's something that we must solve about ourselves or, or overcome. And this is typically where uh, most of you come into this work, okay? And, you, you know, you've, you've been looking at your life as a problem and looking at yourself separate from it and trying to fix it. So the first thing is peace. It's here. It's the core four choices. It's really coming to terms with the core four choices. It's here. So really quickly, the core four choices are you being it. It's you arriving at peace. So let's just quickly orient ourselves into a place of peace. The first choice that we'll all make together is that we choose to live a life we love. So just, you don't have to do anything else. Just close your eyes and make the choice. I choose to live a life I love. And find a feeling of how it would feel to be living a life you love and loving the life you live because you choose to. You're never going to get this experience again. You're never going to be this age again. So choose to love it. What is one thing you could focus on to allow yourself to love your life even more than you're already loving it? What, what could be one thing that you could do today that would just mean you loved your day? What, what is one thing you could create or do today just because you would love it? Just, I choose to, to live a life I love. I choose this. And just feel that feeling of, of how it might feel if someone like you was to just love their life because it's a choice. And then open your eyes and let me know. So, so how did it feel to make the first choice? Feels good, doesn't it? And did anyone come up with some, um, some ways they can love their life a little bit more today? Feels good, doesn't it? So, so that's the first, uh, first one of the four. So the second, the second of the four, is, and, and these are in no order, the second of the four is um, we choose to be the predominant creative force in our life. We choose to be the, the primary predominant creative force in our life. So, so when you're ready, just close your eyes and make the choice that you're the primary creator in your life. You're, you're in charge. You're, you're, you're the primary or predominant creative force in your life. And just make that choice. Just notice how it feels to be the one that is the primary creator in your life. How would you choose to feel? How will you choose to be? What will you choose to put in your, in your system? How will you choose to react to others? Like, just, just notice, I am the predominant creative force in my life. Who do you choose to have in your life or not have in your life? And, and just, just allow yourself to step into that powerful choice and just notice if there's any areas in your life that you're being a victim and giving your power away to, to something else. You know, I don't really want to do that or that person's annoying me and just acknowledge if there's anywhere in your life that you're not being the primary creator and, and just uh, make a decision of how you want to react in those situations, how you want to be, how, what you want to eat, what you, and just bring the power back to you. Just bring the power back to you. Just breathe in this choice. I am the predominant. I am the dominant creative force in my life. That's who I am. I am that. Just feel that strength inside you and just, and just feel it. You, you get to choose how you react, how you respond, how you be, what you say, what, what you focus on, how you show up in the world. You, you, it's your choice.
Great, and open your eyes and just let me know. How'd it feel to just step into being the powerful creator? Is there anything that you need to, I guess, clean up? Feels strong, feels empowering, yeah. Yeah, is it, is it, is it, and just make the decision that you're the most powerful creator in your life. And typically we do give our power away to, you know, society, to systems, to business, to colleagues, to, to children, to spouses, to family, to friends. And we, we let them change how we going to feel. The key to that is we let them. And so just and just make that choice, right? Just you just choose how you want to be. If you want to let them dictate how you feel, well, that's your choice as well. Okay, great. So so, so do you feel these choices? The next the next choice is that uh, that you you choose to be uh, healthy and vital. So close your eyes and just make the choice. I choose to be healthy and vital. I choose the end result of a healthy and vital body. And just make the choice and just notice how it feels to choose that. And notice as you choose it, how good it feels to, to have a body that's working and functioning in the way you want it. And just, and just choose that choice. I choose to have a healthy and vital body, you know, a flexible body, a, a body that's pain-free, a body that uh, is able to do everything you want to do. And just choose that you have a healthy and vital body. And then notice what are the things you will do with your healthy and vital body? Like, what would you like to do with it? Where, where would you like to go with it? What would you like to nourish it with? What does your body, what is your body gonna need to make sure it feels good? What are you gonna do? Just make that choice. I choose healthy and vital body. And as you choose it, just, just really witness yourself taking care of this body and, uh, and, using it in ways that feels good and just notice how it feels to make that choice really connect with the you that has this healthy vital body that it just loves step into the experience of the you that has that Notice how they are. Notice what they do with their body. Notice what they eat and drink and, and say. And just notice what they're wearing and just really choose to be there. And as you choose it, just notice just at least one area uh, or one place that your body is healthy and vital. Do you have a very healthy clear mind or are you, you know are you are you great at where, where are you already healthy and vital just notice that and just feel that you already are to some extent and none of us are a hundred percent but to some extent you know you've got a working system here you might notice that your heart's been been good at beating or you've got good lungs or you're really good at digestion or you have great desires or you know, just notice what you're really good at. You're great at growing fingernails and, and healing from cuts. Just, just notice. And so just, just choose that you, you, you choose to have a healthy and vital body and, and uh, just notice how you are when you're like that. And when you're ready, come back. Let me know how that was. See, we need, we need a vehicle of orientation and we must just choose uh, uh, for us to, to have the most healthy and vital uh, version of it. No, we just, we just do. And there's always something to, you know, there's always something that, you, you know, you're, we are using it up and as we get older, it, it, it does, it does change, doesn't it? it but, but, you know, it's healthy and vital and we, you know, that we can get lots of help. What you do, though, is you notice how you are when you have the healthy and vital body, and then you become that, and then you send the instructions back to you because there's a way, there's a way to be. Yeah. Nice.
Nice. And, and so the, the last one uh, is true nature and purpose. Okay, and just close your eyes and step into this choice. I choose to live my truest nature and purpose. And just feel that feeling of your truest nature. What you will find is your truest nature is playful. Your truest nature is creative. Your truest nature knows that there's more than enough here. And just feel my truest nature. My truest nature is of a creative spark of consciousness. My truest nature is that I'm an energy. I'm a, I'm a point of information in this, this, uh, this one huge experience. Just feel your truest nature. And then just notice what that true nature's purpose is to express itself. Notice how it wants to express itself. So I choose my truest nature. And how does it want to express itself? Is it through art or song or, or, or dance or business or poetry or uh, um, sport or teaching or writing or uh, inventing or team building or being a parent? How does it what is its truest nature? What is your truest nature? What is its current purpose? And just feel that. Yeah. And just notice how, and ask yourself, how could I express this true nature and purpose today? How could I express it today? How could I express it? How could I feel it and express Express it. Find a moment where you're really expressing your truest nature and purpose and just, just live that for a moment. And, and as you live that, also notice as you're living it that you've got a healthy and vital body, that you're the powerful, predominant creative force in your life, and you're loving your day. And just make all of that and, and make the decision you can have all of these today. Yeah. And so when you're ready, come back and just just uh, let me know how you're feeling. How you feeling? So this is step one. This is peace. This is peace, right? This is where we get to come to this place of presence here. And this is where we make the shift because, because once you are and you have decided to become a creator and live these choices, well, then, and you might have, by the way, who felt resistance to some of these choices? Just give me a yes if you did. Because for many of us, we need to recode some of the instructions that say, I can't love my life. You know, I can't feel um, healthy. I'm not healthy. I'm not this. I'm not that. And we, we literally convince ourselves we're not. So for many of us, we, we got to do a, a bunch of work here. Okay. And, and I did. I did. It took me about three or six months in total, but about three months. So I really uh, gave up my old orientation of really recoding and shifting and to finally go, you know what? I am just happy being a human spirit just here. And it was really, really, really difficult because, uh, you know, at that time, lots of things were going bad. And, and, and I, had to, I had to overcome it and go, you know what, might be good, might be bad, and, and arrive at that place of, well, I'm the predominant creative force and, Everything's going to work out, and 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 I'm that. And so you, you must you must just get there. And then once you're truly there, you know you're truly there because you're not trying to get somewhere else to solve your life or to prove to others or to have this idea that life is going to be so much better than it is now. When you really arrive at peace, you, you kind of get this, well, not kind of, you do get this understanding that there is nowhere else I'd rather be than here, even if it, if it feels like everything in your life is falling apart. And it's a, it's a bit of an ego death. 
it's a bit of an ego death. It's a bit of a self-conscious agenda death. It's the death of that. It, it, it no longer can you buy into these ideas that if you just had more money or just a different relationship or just had uh, a little bit less fat on your skeleton, if you just had uh, if you just had a bit more of this, you, you, you just you're just not bought into any of that anymore. You know that actually you'll be as happy or sad as you are right now. You just you just know. And, and that's that first place of peace where you, you truly are it. When you truly are it, you're not trying to get anywhere. You just go, this is this is it. This is as good as it's going to get because I choose it to be great right now. I choose it to be great right now. And so there's nowhere to get to. There's nowhere to run to. There's nowhere better. This is it. And that's when you open the wizard's gate. That's when you open it. You truly open it. You're, you're able then to go for what you would love without this idea that if it fails, life will fall apart. Because what, once you truly arrive here, if you were to go for something big in your life or a new relationship or, and it didn't work, you would not care because you would truly understand that you are bigger than any result. And that's when you get to go for what you love and get your power. That's when you go for what you love. And so as we make that shift, and, and we're going to do some work on it, as we make the shift, we become it. And that when, when I say you must you know, be it to see it, being it means you already are the end result. And so everything else is just a fun game. Like everything else is just a fun game. So I just, just, just take all those choices in, okay? And, and just feel them all. And what if it was just a fun game uh, to recreate your body? with, you know, a different, a different um, digestive tract? Or what if it was just a fun game to, uh, you know, you know, try to make more money than you could spend? What if it was just a fun game to see how many countries you could travel to? What if it was a fun game to just be the best parent you could? What if it was a fun game? You see that? What if it was a fun game rather than this big, scary object? What if it, what if it was just a fun game called, you know, how can we grow the, the biggest personal development um, company on the planet? What if it was just a game? And there were rules to the game. Well, it was just a fun game. How could you, you know, buy your dream house or start your jewelry business or um, write a book? What if it was a game? What if it was just a game? Can I just feel into that for a second? If it was just a game and there was a scoreboard and there were rules and, you know, others in the game. But what if it was just a game? And so what's interesting is in order for life to be able to have joy and, and, uh, and love and all of this, you've got to just choose it because everything else is, is, um, is beneath you as the creative energy. And, and this is why I, I have such a hard time with a lot of the other trainers who, who want you to go out there and, you know, uh, get something to feel a certain way. It's like, no, just feel that way now. And then let's play some fun games called how do we recreate society? How do we, how do we, uh, you know, completely free ourselves uh, and do what we love? How do we travel the world? How do we, how do we create new education? How, what do we do? You see? And so I want you just to feel into the energy of how it might feel if you already knew that there was no better place than now and you could never feel any better than now how would you choose to feel and once you choose to feel that way what if everything else is just a fun game and you get to go create some magic and create some some fun
when you shift to it being a game, you've already shifted. Life doesn't need to reflect anything back to you. You're too busy playing a fun game. You, you know, maybe good, maybe bad. So peace, love, power. Go on this uh, incredible experience that we're all on. But at some point, you need to drop the conditioning that says you can't have it now. You know, drop. you, you need to drop it. There's 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 no point complaining get out there and create because by creating what you want then that's what you get to experience but also you get to create how you feel right now because if something else is changing how you feel it has the power and we are we are literally going through some amazing times hey it's it's incredible out there and uh, we, we're going to have some very big conversations happening in uh, in society, uh, especially especially with lots of new technologies coming. That that we get to ask ourselves, well, what is the fun games that we all want to play? What's going to be enjoyable? How do we want to express um, that which we are in in different ways? So it's very fun, very fun. So what I would like uh, us to do is, is to sit in this feeling of there's nothing to change and nothing is better than right now. And I, I'm going to ask you some questions and just be honest with your resistance to this. How much do you resist the statement that there is nothing better than the way your life is right now? Yeah. 10 out of 10 resistance means, no, Chris, there's heaps of things that be better than right now. Zero out of 10 is eight. Yeah. To the degree that you're resisting that is the degree that you're giving your power to whatever it is that you think will make your life better. There's nothing better than it is right now. So the only reason that there's something better than it is right now is that that's what you have decided. So you must ask, well, why would I decide that that is better than now? And when you ask that question, you will, you will realize that it's much easier to um, point the finger at something else than it is to actually choose to feel good. And you'll also notice that you've been telling that story for a while, that if I just had that, if I just had that, if I just had that, then it would be better. And you'll notice that, that, you know, there's a common theme there. See, if right now was better than anything else, what would you lose? 
if right now was true, if you could accept that it was better than anything else, what would you lose? A lot of people feel that they would lose motivation. A lot of people feel that they would lose their way of being. And a lot of people would say that they would lose what life was about. Because if there's, if there's nothing better than right now, and my whole life has been about trying to create something better, then what would life be about? And so what you actually lose is this whole story that we've been told that we, we must feel negative about the now in order to go and uh, create what we love. And so when you decide that right now is better than anything else and that you can truly accept that, then you're truly in the magnetic moment. You really are there. Does that make sense? You're really there. You're like, you know what? This is a human experience and it is better than anything. I'm getting to have this moment and overcome this challenge and figure this thing out. And this is better than anything else could ever be. And then the next moment will be better than anything. Then the next moment will be better. We're, we're so busy running from one challenge to another. And, and the, the real interesting thing is, is, you know, I did it. You'll go make a lot of money and there'll just be another challenge or you'll go do this. There'll just be another thing. And, and the, the, so the truth is, is that you got to get there right now. There's no other way. And the more that you hold on to the fact that you think that, in the future, it'll be so much better. The more you're just disappointed as you get there and there's just still more challenges. You know, so there'll be challenges, there'll be stuff, they'll just be different. So they're not better, they're not worse, it's just life. And, and, and when you really get that, then you, you, you're going to be like that farmer. Could be good, could be bad, 